you heard our, our three leaders uh, speak to us this evening, this, this book of the Bible was directed to a lady. Um, we don't know uh, specifically what her name is. We don't know at all. Um, doesn't really too much matter, but um, John did protect who she was. Uh, she was a very prominent person. Uh, she was someone who um, gave to the church. She was someone who led in the church and helping uh, to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. So as you see on your notes, this a uh, very short and interesting book of the Bible that King James chose to insert in this version of the Bible only has 13 verses. And so it's the 63rd book of the Bible, but it speaks to what you would call a small audience. And so I truly believe that God will, he'll draw us in to what he spoke through John to this elect lady. This is a person who he chose, uh, that elect meaning a person who he chose to speak to, who he chose to speak to, the elect lady. So as you see, John is the shortest New Testament book of the Bible. The shortest New Testament book of the Bible. The main and central message of the letter of 2 John will keep us on target spiritually and challenge us about what we believe and why we believe what we believe, right? You don't want to just believe something. You want to understand why you believe what you believe. Even before you join a club or something, you want to learn everything you can learn about it so that you know exactly the, you know, the agenda that you're trying to advance. Does that make sense? And so uh, when you even have job interviews for jobs, they'll ask you, uh, what do you know about this company? Why do you want to work for us? Well, basically, I need a job, right? Okay, but why do you, what do you know about the company? And uh, that's a dead giveaway if you did your homework. You know, well, the company's this, this, that, and other, and they don't want to know a whole lot. They just want to know at least two or three senses about what you know about the company. What is it that you know that we do? Which basically lets me know how serious you are about working for us, right? And so um, that's, what, that's what this is. And so um, this book of the Bible is, is it's a least regarded book of the Bible. And uh, many people seem to disregard it because it's small. Well, There's not much content there. But guess what, y'all? You can't judge a book by its cover, right? There's a lot of meat as we're going to go through tonight, and you're going to, as we extrapolate out of uh, 2 John, it's going to be a whole lot of meat that we can take with us. And I truly believe that God will speak to you and that he'll encourage you right where you are throughout your life. And so, uh, as you see, there are many preachers, laypersons, they isogetically insert their own ideas into this text. That's a no-no. That's, that's basically saying, this is what I believe, this is that, no, no, no. What does the text say? What does it say? What does it say? And so sometimes, and unfortunately, uh, there are some who take it way out of context, satanically, and say, oh, you know, she was seduced, this and that and other. No, there's that's, that's, that's no, that's, that's no validity to that. That is false. False doctrine, which is what we're dealing with tonight. These were false teachers. These were false prophets. You could call them false preachers. You know, as you, you heard each of the three leaders speak tonight, and they uh, very well uh, spoke and, and, and spoke about the falseness, but they also spoke about the love of God still being advanced. Now, as we're going to learn a little bit more, John now, he's in his 90s. He's in his 90s. He's in his 90s now. Uh, he's written the book of John, the book of 1 John, and the book of 2 John and 3 John. Now, if I can take us back for a moment, um, in the Bible, in the Word of God, and John Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, right? He says, no man or no person comes to the Father except or through me, right? Again, he says, I am the way, number one, I am the truth, number two, I am the life, number three, all right? So, in 1 John, we studied, I am the way. Are you, are you with me? You remember that? So now we're learning uh, that I am the truth. Jesus said, I am the truth. That's what 2 John comprises of. All right? It, it, this 1st, uh, 2nd, and 3rd John come directly out of John's. Now, 3rd John is I am the life. 
we're going to study that next next week. I am the life. Amen. So what we're studying is I am the uh, the what? I'm the way, the truth. That's where we are. Amen. All right. So I'm going to drop down. Uh, it says John over time, he developed a strong friendship with this elect lady, but he warned her not to be involved, not to, to allow herself to be rather swayed by false teachers. Amen. And he sent out a warning about this in these these 12 verses, uh, in these 11 verses, excuse me, in verses 12 and 13 are his final words, his final words. And so he addresses himself as basically as like in our in our generation, I'm an old man, I'm an old woman or whatever. Uh, he was identifying himself as the elder, the elder, not from a presbyterial uh, sense in terms of a ministerial sense, as, although he was as uh, one of our ministers she mentioned. Yeah, yeah, he was one of the last apostles. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly right. Um, but 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 he says, I am the elder. Listen to me. So he greets us as you see here in verses one and two. And he says to this elect lady, her children, whom I love in truth, not only I, but also those who know the truth because of the truth which abides in us will be with us forever. Now, remember, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. So this word truth also translates to Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. The truth is Jesus. The truth is him. Amen. All right. So he's speaking of himself as the elder. He's the writer. All right. And I'm dropping uh, number one. John the Apostle, he's very old in age now. All right. And yeah, he was allowed to say what he said. All right. <laughs> Let it be to the elect lady and her children. This was this woman. Uh, she was chosen uh, by him. He really wanted to get a word over to her. Obviously, he had some confidence, some safety, some trust in her. Someone whom he could refer to. Someone whom he could talk to who prayerfully would listen to him. All right. Are y'all following that? And so you could look at on your top of your, your outline on page two. She was also someone in our day, what we would call the mother of the church, the mother of the church, the mother of the church. And so or she was someone of particular prominence in a congregation, a church of people. Now, there's some Bible scholars, number one, who believe uh, that, well, they just personified a lady may not be. And the elect lady could just be the church. And I've heard that is interchangeable. You could you could look at that from a spiritual sense. But no, it was really to a lady because when you do the research, it was written to this lady because, again, there were so many false teachers, so many false prophets running around. That's what John was dealing with. You remember even James dealt with that some. Peter dealt with the same stuff. Now, John is dealing with it. Isn't that amazing? All right. So um, now I'm going to drop down to number three. Look at this on uh, the top of page uh, two. Look at this. John did not name himself, right? No, he didn't do that. So the elect lady or her children by name because this was written during a time of persecution, a time of persecution. So John didn't want to implicate anyone by name in a written letter. He didn't want to do that. So that's why he says to the elect lady. All right. In other words, he did. Thank you, Lord. He just gave me this idea. If you ever use BCC, he blind courtesy copied her. Does it make sense? He BCC'd her. Did you follow that? Here's what he did. He BCC'd her. You know, get that? That just, that just, they look, that came from heaven. Don't cost us nothing. He just BCC'd her, right? In his own way. That's what he did. <laughs> I love that. That just, that just, that just, that just hit me. So, uh, because of persecution, he wanted, and he'd hoped to God that she would get the letter. Yeah, because if she didn't, if he had written it by name, if he had left his address on the letter, right? Mm -hmm. If it was an envelope, it was not. <laughs> but if he did, he could have gotten killed. So could she. Are you following that? Yeah. Death to both of them. Let us see. He says, whom I love and choose, not only I, whom the elect lady was, she was loved by everybody. She's loved by everybody. All right. Are you following that? All right. The truth which abides in us also lives in others who know the truth. Who is this truth again? Jesus. Say Jesus. Jesus. Amen. So letter one. Now, number one, we see John quite focused on the idea of truth, the advancement of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
the propagation of the gospel. Amen. He used this word truth some 37 times in the New Testament writings, in his writings, John did. Amen. I'm, let, I'm dropping down to D. Will be with us how long? Forever. The truth. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall never pass away. Right. Amen. Amen. God's word will last into eternity, into eternity, into eternity. Well, after our existence. Amen. 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 And guess what? If you remember, he spoke the worlds into existence. So when they say the Big Bang Theory, I believe it was him. <laughs> right? Isn't that a show, Big Bang Theory? Yeah, it's kind of a crazy show, huh? Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I believe it was him. Because he, when you look in, the, uh, 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 in Genesis chapter 1, he says, let, he said, let be, let there be. Well, when you translate it, it means let be, let be. Let be, you know, mm -hmm. then he said, let us make man in our own image. Well, who was he talking about? Well, the Holy Spirit, Genesis chapter one is mentioned. He moved upon the face of the waters, right? Well, who else is he talking about? He wasn't made manifest in the flesh yet until what we would call the New, the, the New Testament in John. He's talking about Christ, Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He, Jesus was Christ or God incarnate in flesh. When our other leaders, she spoke about how these folks, they denied the, uh, the incarnation of Christ. They don't want any, they, no, no, we believe some other mess, but we, we're going to believe what we want to believe. Uh -huh. But Christ, absolutely not. Are you following this? And people were following after this and they were bidding these people Godspeed. These were church folks, Christian folks. Isn't that amazing? That's what was going on. And they were being deceived, unfortunately. Verse 3, look at this. He says, Grace, mercy, peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, in truth and in love. Most of this, again, is an apostolic greeting. Uh, an apostolic greeting. Uh, grace, mercy, peace be with you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as you see, we broke this down. John, he presents a, an expanded version, slightly so. And this standard greeting. I'm going to drop down for sake of time. In truth and in love, look at this. Apart now from God's truth and love, we can never really have grace, mercy, and peace. That's letter B. We can't. I got to read that again. Apart from God's truth, that's his word. Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And love, we can never really have grace and even show grace and walk in grace toward each other and people, Amen. right? Amen. And even mercy. We can't do that. And even peace, even having peace in the mind. Because so much can be going on in the mind, we don't have peace sometimes. Amen. We can't. Amen? Amen. The son and, and of the father, the apostle still keeps the view of the miraculous conception of Christ. Amen? Amen. All right. Now, the Gnostics, I, I could hardly wait to get to this one. The Gnostics, they absolutely deny Christ. They were known as Antichrist. They propagated and taught doctrines that did not line up with God's word. And people were just like on the edge of their seats. These were Christians, believers. They were being deceived. They are called what we would call and the word calls the very elect were being deceived. Are you following this? And that's a day, unfortunately, that we live in. The very elect are being deceived. People are, are running from here and there, running from here and there. I need this. I need that. I need this. I need something to hold on to. That's what I need. Instead of really understanding who Christ really is, and even as our elder, he mentioned earlier, we have to do the word. The word has to abide in us. John even talks about that. So all three of you did an excellent job. You did. We have to abide, which means to live in the word. There's also a, a Hebrew word, uh, uh, um, inhabit. Uh, when you look in the Psalms, it says God inhabits the praises of his people. Inhabits means deacon to uh, live in. Amen. To dwell in. We have to abide and dwell in Christ. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? So look at verse four. Look at this. How to walk. How to walk. Look at this. John's joy is to find that they are now walking in truth. 
meaning they're receiving what he's telling them. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Look at this. He said, I rejoice greatly that I found some of y'all. <laughs> Not all of you, but some of y'all. Let me just say down south. I'm sorry. I'm from the south. Some of y'all. Not all of y'all. You in North Carolina? Yeah. Oh, okay. She's North Carolina. Yeah. <laughs> from some of y'all. Amen. Amen. As we receive the commandment from the Father. He says, no, look at this. Look at this. Letter A on your outline page three. Look at this. This is a pastor's heart. It's true. I don't just want to get up here and preach and teach. And I'm like, man, I, man, maybe I need to water it down some more. Then no one's applying. I'm like, well, Lord, uh, did you really send me here? Because guess what? A pastor, whoever she or he is, they'll question their own call if they're being effective. Well, maybe I'm teaching too hard. Maybe it's not making sense. You know, maybe I'm, you know, I don't know. You know, and so a lot of times we evaluate ourselves based upon the fruit that we see in the congregation. If we're seeing people grow, if we're seeing people apply the word as our elder taught tonight. Amen. You know, uh, not just our own delivery and style and sounding good and all that. No, no, no. You know, are, am I getting the word across? Am I fulfilling my assignment? Amen. Because guess what? If we don't fulfill our assignment, God will move us. He'll do that. Amen. But while he has us in places, we must fulfill our assignment. Amen. So he says, listen, I, 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 I just I just want to rejoice that 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 I heard that some of you all are doing right. <laughs> That's what he said. Amen. Let it be. I have found some of you walking in the truth. All right. This is what he said. Verse five. Look at this. He says, I plead with you, lady. Not as though I wrote something new to you. This is nothing new to you, not at all. But that which we have been from the beginning, that we what? Love one another. All three of you tonight, you gave your summary and you spoke not only about the false teachers, but you spoke about that four letter word, the L-O-V-E word. Yeah. And that's what John's agenda still is. The advancement of the love of Christ. Amen. Amen. All right. Now look at this. He says, I'm pleading with you. In other words, uh, letter A, in our modern day speech, he's saying, y'all need to be doing folks right. <laughs> you see, I wrote that there. Do them right. Amen. Treat them right in love. Turn yourself, sir, turn yourself away from phony people. Amen. Right? Be real. <laughs> Are you following this tonight? Not as though I wrote something new. He's in other words, this ain't nothing new. I've been saying the same thing. Now I'm in my 90s. I see, you know. He said it all throughout John. He said it in 1 John, and he's saying it here, right? He said, I'm talking about the truth now, right? He was Jesus. I am the way. Now 2 John is what? I'm the truth. That's what he echoes. There's that, there's that word, right? T-R-U-T-H. What's that? Five letters? One, two, three, four, five. Right? <laughs> that word truth comes up a lot in this, in this uh, book of the Bible. Amen. Who he's referring to? He's referring to Christ. Amen. Jesus. Amen. So look at this. He said, this is nothing new. Let us see. That we love one another. That's what we're supposed to do. Verse 6. This is love that we walk according to whose commandments? Whose commandments? What shall I say? Whose commandments? His commandments. Let's just read your outline. It says, walk according to his commandments. This is the commandment that as you have heard from the beginning, you should walk in it. Keep doing what you're doing. Amen. Just don't, 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 don't let up. Don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. If you're loving right. Amen. As if you're loving right. If you're not loving right, come on now. Love right. That's what he's talking about. Amen. Are you following me tonight? All right. Now look at this. So. Uh, look at letter A. This is love that we walk according to his commandments. If we love God, beloved, we will obey whose commandments? His commandments. We do this not because we think his commandments are heavy burdens. No, but because we see they are the best for us. This is what we want to do. They are guides and gifts to us from God. God gives us that gift. He gives us those abilities to love folks, to care. Amen. He gives us those. Amen. Let it be. Walk according to his commandments. Real love will walk this way. 
Perhaps John now, he warned against those who thought only the, the only important thing in life was to have a vague love. Okay, that fake stuff. Oh, love you, brother. Love you, brother. I see you on the highway. I ain't doing nothing for you, right? <laughs> you know, no, no. In other words, look at this. Ain't nothing to it but to do it. You see that? Just do it. Nike. Which means what? Victory, right? All right? Amen. <laughs> Next two verses, seven through nine. A warning against these present and dangers of false teachers. Look at this. Now, for many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Remember, Jesus said, I'm the way, right? We studied that. I'm the truth. So that's what he's echoing now. I am the truth. Are you following this? All right. This is a deceiver and antichrist. He's talking about the Gnostics. The, the Gnostics, excuse me. Gnosticism means those who believe there's something out there, but it's not God. Atheists say there's no God at all, right? Okay, but the Gnostics, that's, that's what was prevalent in this day. They were just running all around this area, but they were propagating and teaching false doctrines to these people. And so people were believing it. And remember, they were on the edge of their seats. A lot of the Christians who follow after Christ. Amen. And so they taught all kinds of false doctrines. And he said, wait a minute, although I'm not with you, uh, elect lady, woman of God, spiritual leader, whoever you are, get this word to them. I pray you get this letter. God, let them get this letter. Lord, let them get this email. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But, 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 but these people, they were anti-Christs. Amen. How many believe we live in that day? Amen. Look at this. Mark 13. Let's go there real quick. Mark 13. Mark 13. Look at this. Mark chapter 13, verse 22. You know, that's just a day that we live in now. So many people are running after all kinds of strange doctrines, and they're not necessarily convinced in who they believe in. Either you follow Christ or you don't. Either you believe in God or you don't. Are you following this? Mark 13, verse 22. We live in this day. Let's look at verse 21. He says, and then if any man shall say to you, here's Christ, or he's over here, don't believe him. Y'all see this in emails at least every, if not every day, uh, every month, at least two or three times a year. There's folks saying, I'm Jesus. Folks walking along the highway, I'm Jesus. Right? Don't believe it. Don't believe the hype. Who said that? Flavor Flav, right? <laughs> don't believe, don't believe, don't believe the hype. That was my day. Okay, anyway. Look at this, verse 22. For false Christ and false prophets shall what? Rise. That's the day we live in. That's what was happening in 2 John. False prophets. Amen. That's what they, they were teaching all kinds of things that did not line up with the teachings they had received about Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so it says they'll show signs and wonders to seduce, meaning to trick, to draw you in. That's what that means. That word seduce in this sense of the word, if it were possible, even the elect, they were the elect, but they were being deceived. Are you following this? Now, let's look, uh, look at this. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. Follow here with me. 2 Timothy chapter number 4, verse 3. Yeah, I hope this is really blessing you tonight. Amen. Yeah. Because it's really blessing me. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3. I'm going to read this. It says, For the time will come when they will not... Endure. Endure means to take heed, to listen to sound doctrine. Right? Doctrine means teaching. Say teaching. teaching. Right. But after their own lust mean cravings. After their own cravings, what they want to hear. Right? Shall heap to themselves. They'll gather other folks and, and find, you know, seek out these kinds of folks. Teachers. Teachers. To teach what they want to hear. Right? I don't want a pastor to teach me what I want to hear. I want a pastor to teach me what I don't want to hear. Amen. Amen. Step on my toes. Help me to grow. I want to make it in. Jesus, help me. Amen. I don't want a, I don't want a yes man pastor. Amen. Or yes woman. Right? No, no, no. I don't want that. And they shall what? Turn away their ears from the what? Truth. Who is the truth? Jesus. Jesus. 
They're turning their ears from him and shall be turned to fables, which are false doctrines, false teachings, even over TV. People are doing these things. But many deceivers, they have gone out into the world, beloved. That's, just, that's what's happening. And so the immediate problem, as you see on page four of your outline tonight, uh, praise God, in 2 John, is these traveling teachers. When our other leaders she was talking about tonight. These traveling missionaries, these traveling false prophets, there's a lot of that today. Amen. Amen. A lot of these traveling folks that people are running behind. Somebody reminded me of what they used to do in the 70s, and I believe sometime in the 80s. Uh, different ones, they used to want to call themselves faith healers, you know. And uh, what they would do is they would, you know, ask them, how you doing? How you feeling? And, oh, I'm doing with this. And somebody would be writing it down or something. Oh, you know. And, and so someone would get something in their ear, and, you know, and then somebody's in the back corner, and, and they'll call somebody somebody up. They'll say, oh, someone who's dealing with the headache over here. And, and folks are running after all this stuff. And people are thinking these people are working signs and wonders to seduce even the elect. We just got through reading that, right? And people were following all this, 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 this falseness. Didn't know any better. But people kept following this until they finally learned this is wrong. Are you following this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, as they say, we live and we learn, right? But look at this, number two. Many of these people entertain the folks who would listen to them. Today we have TV that showcases the same kind of false teaching. These false preachers, these false doctrines, these false teachings, right? And people fall for this foolishness without allowing the Holy Spirit to help them to discern what is truth and what is a lie. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's a person. He's part of the Godhead. The Bible says in John that he will lead us and guide us into all truth. He. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he. <clears throat> Jesus said, listen, guys, I know you're sad, but I got to go. But I'm going to leave somebody who's comparable to me. Amen. Amen. It's me, but it's my spirit. Amen. That's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. It's me, but it's my spirit. I, I'm not necessarily physically with you, but I'm going to be with you wherever you go. Are you following this tonight? Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah, mm -hmm. comparable to me. Oh my God, amen. I'm moving, I'm moving hurriedly. Look at this, letter B. This is a deceiver. John mainly had in mind the danger in his own day and own time, amen, of those who thought Jesus being God could have no real correction or connection, excuse me, with the material world. They said that he only had an apparent connection with the material world, which was false. A parent? Are you serious? No. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And so to combat this, John made a plain declaration. This is what he said. He said, we must confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. Remember John chapter 1. And the word, what? Who was the word? God was what? Made flesh. Oh, who is that? Jesus. And he dwelt among us, right? Yeah. Amen. Y'all know the word. Praise God. Amen. I feel good. I feel this tonight. Amen. Amen. And so he came in human form. Praise God. Verse C. Uh, let us see, little verse C. <laughs> let us see. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. These Gnostics who taught what we would call Gnosticism, they were antichrists. Against. Anti means against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. Amen. And so these false, this false idea of Jesus, John insists, those who do not confess him is coming to the flesh, they're deceivers. They're, they, they operate in the spirit of Antichrist. Amen. Look at number eight. Look to yourselves that we do not lose those things we work for. Everything I taught y'all, don't lose it. Amen. Amen. I know you parents, grandparents, you probably said to your children, don't you forget what I taught you, right? Yeah. <laughs> don't you forget? You know where you got your home training from. <laughs> you better act like, like you know. <laughs> you ever heard that? You heard something like that? Yeah, don't, yeah you did. Yeah, yeah. Same me, me too. Don't you forget it. Amen. Sir, it'll serve us well, right? Amen. Amen. And so he said, look to yourselves, letter D, that we don't lose this. To depart from the true Jesus means you put yourself in jeopardy to lose the things the apostles and other faithful saints work for. 
They went through being beheaded, boiled, and made it through. Hallelujah. Uh, persecuted. You name it. For the cause of Christ. Amen. 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 Number nine. Look at this. Whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not love God. Right? Or does not have God. Excuse me. He who abides, which means to dwell in, to live in, the doctrine of Christ has both the Father and the Son. You have both the Father and the Son? Amen. If we abide. Guess what? We got to make a choice to abide. He can't make us. Amen. Amen. I believe Jesus Christ is coming again. I feel the Lord on that. He's coming back. Yes, he is. And we all want to go back with him. But we have to make it up in our minds that we want to abide in him. It's critical to do so. Amen. Let whoever transgresses and does not abide in the doctrine of Christ does not have God. There's nothing noble, sincere, courageous, admirable in a false Jesus. Right? Not at all. Not deacon. To deny the biblical Jesus is always to reject the Father and the Son. Mm -hmm. John here, he draws, here's that word again, critical line of truth over what is heresy to transgress, which means to go against. Amen? Are you following this? I'm, for sake of time, I'm moving hurriedly. Page five, look at this. Transgress means to go beyond a boundary, to step across the line. That's what it means to trespass. If you you trespass, <laughs> get off my property right now. <laughs> you transgress against me. Use that in the word this week. You transgress. No, don't do that. <laughs> Somebody gonna look at you like transgress. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> you know what you mean trespass? Oh, I know what that means. You transgress <laughs> against me. <laughs> We ain't in 1611 A.D. transgressed. You transgressed against me. <laughs> no, that's not what we are. Are you getting this? Yeah. Verses 10 and 11, look at this. Here's some instructions for dealing with the false teachers. Now, this is going to be really interesting. Watch this. If anyone, verse 10, comes to you and does not bring this doctrine again, circle out your Bible or on your outline. Doctrine means teaching. Do not receive him into your house. Oh, nor bid them Godspeed. Now, for those who watch this video, I'm not going to knock off some stuff, but you know where I'm going with this. Don't let everybody in your house. That's right. You can't. You can't let everybody in your house. That's right. If it's not lining up with God's word, don't fool with these people. <laughs> well, we want to give you this magazine. Well, can we come in and have a talk with you? <laughs> now, I know some folk will lie and say, I'm sick right now. Oh, this is going out. <laughs> you ain't got to do all that. You can just say, no, I'm not interested. Right? Right. Man. right? right. 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 <laughs> but, you know, now they keep knocking. I ain't going to answer. Some of you be peeking around. <laughs> you ain't got to do all that. I'm not interested. Thank you. Have a good day. Don't be mean. Go away. Don't be mean. <laughs> right? Some folks do stuff like that. No, I don't do that. Some folks shut, 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 you know, shut the curtains, put the lights off, pretend like you ain't home. And they just saw you walking around. <laughs> right? You know you in the house. Right? Amen. Look, anybody home? No. Nope. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you home. You just don't want to talk to me. <laughs> yeah. You mean leave you a track for lying. All liars should have their part in the lake of fire, right? They could be a Christian now. <laughs> but he said, don't fool with these folks. Don't fool with the Gnostics. The false apostles, the false teachers. Amen. The false prophets. Don't mess with these people. Amen? Are you following this? In that day, it was customary for them to give hospitality and aid in every which way or every sense, rather, of the word. Even if they needed medical attention, they were to basically put them up and take care of them, even if they were false. But John says, don't do that either because they're wrong. Don't you do anything like that. 
You have no business taking care of them. Well, they, 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 they need help. Don't do anything. Can't believe that, huh? That's what he said. He said, elect lady, get the word to them. Get this message. Get this. This is short. But tell them, don't fool with these folks. Even in this day, we can't fool with these kinds of folks. You can't bid them Godspeed. Are you following this? Amen. Amen. Don't fool with them. They're evil. It's best not to even listen to what they're saying. Look at look at 2 Corinthians 11. Oh, we got to go there. We got to go there. We got to go there. 2 Corinthians 11. Oh, we're going to have some fun. We're trying to close this tonight. 2 Corinthians. I look, I turn to 2 Chronicles. No, 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, sir. Yeah. See, I can barely say it. 2 Corinthians 11. Highlight these in your Bible. Circle them. Praise God. 2 Corinthians 11. Look at this. Watch this now. 2 Corinthians 11. Now, now follow here with me. This one verse. 11. Uh, verse number 12. Look at the day that we're in. And catch this spiritual revelation. Catch this now. Catch this. But what I do, that I will do. In other words, I'm about doing the will of God. That's what he's saying. I'm going to do what God's telling me to do. That's what he's saying. That I may cut off occasion. In other words, I'm not going to give them the time of day. Right? Means cut off the occasion, meaning I'm not going to give them the time of day. Right? Uh, from them which desire occasion. They want to have a meeting with me. I, I, no, I'm not, I'm not for it. I'm not for it. Well, oh, ha have this, this food. Or oh, come uh, uh, worship with us over here. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to give you the time of day. That's what he's saying. That wherein they glory in what they believe. Are you following this? They glory meaning in their own belief system. Are you following this, believers? They may be found even as we. Still trying to make it. Right? Now look at this. Verse 13. For such are false apostles. There it is. It's right there. They're false. Deceitful workers. We live in that day. How many of you believe that? We do. Amen. Amen. Deceitful workers transforming. Uh oh, they're doing it themselves, not God. They're transforming their own selves into the apostles of Christ. They're trying to deceive folks, making themselves. I'm the, the lustrous miraculous bishop or the uh, prophet, prophetess, doctor, reverend, doctor, bishop, evangelist, world traveler. Wow. <laughs> All these names from the First Baptist Church of the um, uh, Methodist, Episcopal, Presbyterian, all of this. And you're supposed to follow me. And some people follow these folks. Right. Yeah. Somebody will follow you if you, you get out to do something. Somebody's going to follow you. Yes, they will. They sure will. But they transform themselves. Now look at this, verse 14. And no marvel for Satan himself is transformed to an angel of light. Folks can't even rather discern if that's the devil or if that's God. Even in this sense of the scripture, he was saying, y'all need to have a better sense of discerning. And that's what, what our elders, he talked about tonight. Have, pray for discerning of the spirit so that you can see the enemy. See what's false and know what's true. Are you following that? Amen. amen. Are, you, are you getting that tonight? Amen. We're moving her as we begin to close this. Oh, uh, Amen. And so in that Middle Eastern, and rather in that Eastern culture, uh, they weren't to have connection with these folks. Nope, didn't matter if they were uh, missionaries or whatever they called themselves, false, whatever. No, don't be involved in that stuff because they're spreading false teachings. Amen. He who greets him. Look at this letter B. John means greets him much uh, more involved in the context than our own. In that culture, it meant to show hospitality, to give aid, even uh, medical aid, <laughs> food, finances. To substance, as, as subsistence, subsistence is food. You don't even do all that. Let them fend for themselves. Do you false prophet? Get away from me! <laughs> Your false self. You false. Right? He didn't say call them names and stuff, but he says just don't, don't be a part of it. Are you getting that? <laughs> That's what he said, right? Yeah. I'm dropping down for the sake of time. Let us see. Do not receive them to your house. Don't greet them. Don't put them up to watch your smart TV. <laughs> Don't give them no ruffles. 
<laughs> Don't give them no chips and dip, no Kool-Aid, <laughs> no, no Moscato, Ruscato, <laughs> no, you know what this is, no Budweiser, Bud Light, <laughs> Chardonnay. <laughs> Don't do it. Amen. Amen. Don't get no Starbucks. <laughs> Not even that. Yeah, she drinks Starbucks. <laughs> Don't give them nothing. Is this plain for you tonight? I hope it's helping you. Don't don't even fool with these folks. Kind of they're gonna pretend they're this and that and other. They're gonna look good. They're gonna sound good and illustrious. Smell good. Drive good. Got all the right words. But if you don't pray and ask the Lord to, uh, to, uh, to equip you with a discerning of spirits, not discernment, that's incorrect. Discerning of spirits. Ask God to give you an eye to see. You need an eye to see what's false, what's right, what's wrong. Amen. And guess what? You won't be, not, not any of you, but, but there are people who are so gullible. They don't pray and ask the Lord, Lord, show me what's right and what's wrong. Show me the true motive and heart of these people, of that individual, or whatever that is. This organization, Lord, truly show me before I involve myself in this organization. Because I don't want to get caught up into something that's going to take me away from what I should be doing. Amen. Take me out of the will of God, or whatever it might be. Amen. Uh, take your time away, whatever it might be. Hinder you in any kind of way. Are you following this? Are you following this? He said, don't even mess with them. Don't greet them. Amen. It means don't receive them into your house. Letter I, number one. The people were not to give official welcome. Nope. Can't come in. Sorry. Can I come in? Nope. Can't come in. Why not? Because you teach false stuff. Oh, Lord. How do you know? How many of you know that there are those who are went instead of being sent? <laughs> it's a lot of wince and not sense. Y'all might as well say, man. There's a lot of you, there's a lot of folk who went and not sent. Look, I see y'all writing that down. Ooh, that's good. Ooh, I gotta use that. You got somebody gonna tweet that tonight. Somebody gonna put it on Facebook, Twitter, do something. It's an old saying. Yeah. It's went and not sent. Yeah, yeah. Went and not sent. And those people are false. As well. Amen. Amen. But those who are over them should know better. They should have discerning of spirits as well. Not to do this wrong as we're getting ready to read in verse 22. Look at this. Lay hands subtly on no man. Neither be partake of another man's sins. Keep yourself pure. In other words, don't be part of foolishness. Amen. Don't partake in other folks' sins and endorsing something that does not line up with the word of God. Are you with me? Oh, this is God. And you sense, you know there ain't no Holy Spirit nowhere up in there. I'm not going to be a part of this. Well, where are you going? I'm going home. <laughs> I'm going somewhere else or whatever. You ain't got to tell them all that. No, I got, uh, no I'm sorry. See ya. Don't want to be you, right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. Yeah. So look at this. Letter D. Uh, 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 verse 11 ran. For he that bids him God speed is partaker of his evil deeds. And we just read that. Don't be a partaker of another man's sins. Don't do that. Amen. Don't be part of this. Are you following this? As we conclude tonight. As we conclude. He gave his instructions in what we call those first 11 verses. Powerful instructions. He was straight to the point. Amen. Now he, 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 he gives his, his, his parting greetings. But, hey, I hope to come see you soon. <laughs> you ever said that to anybody? Yeah, I hope to come see you one of these days. I may see you, may not. That's what that means. <laughs> That's what it means. Yeah. Amen. Verse 13. The children of your elect sister, is when our sister is here, she, she mentioned earlier, greet you. Amen. So the children of your elect sister telling us that she actually did have a sister. Do we know what her name is? No, but it was a reason he mentioned her. Do we really know that? No, we really don't know all of it, but they obviously had children, right? Yeah, 
And again, it is believed that the, the elect lady or a lady means the church. Okay, again, you can look at that from a spiritual sense, but it's really, again, referring to a representative in the church. Is this, is this making sense? But this lady, too, I believe he mentions her to let her know, listen, what you receive from me, share with her. Share with her, too. And, and they also believe that, okay, if this is one church, share it with the sister church, from the elder to the church.